Well, the Okanagan Sun are back in action this Saturday. It's the season opener right here at the Apple Bowl against the West Shore Rebels. Welcome to another season of Sunspots here on Shaw TV. Joined by the head coach of the Sun, uh, Ben McCauley. Ben, first off, uh, thanks for sitting down and uh, looking forward to getting this season going on the weekend here. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure uh, talking football. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about the way last season ended and how we got here to this point. Uh, first of all, uh, before we talk about the last game last year against West Shore, this is your second year as head coach of this team, but it was your first kind of full off season with this team as well, having it under your control. How did that process go in the off season? Was it more comfortable having an entire off season? How did that sort of go on your end? It's night and day difference between now and last year. Um, the, big, the big difference is preparation. Uh, we had a chance to fill out our coaching staff to you know a full complement of coaches over 15 coaches uh, full time so uh, and having all of those guys involved in the playbook process and in the recruiting process uh, made a world of difference um, you know the the level of uh, uh, compete and readiness that we came into training camp with this year is just uh, incomparable and um, you know your first year you don't really know what you don't know and so it was sort of a process of, of feeling that out and uh, now I feel we're in a good spot. Um, we're ready to compete uh, as last year we kind of had to uh, ease our way into it. So a uh, big difference between this season and last season. Let's talk first about, you mentioned uh, filling out the coaching staff. Uh, you've got some returnees, guys that you worked with last year. Talk a little bit about uh, who are some of the guys that you're going to be comfortable working again with this year and some of the newcomers as well. Well, both of our coordinators on offense and defense are back. Nathan Mollard uh, is back as defensive coordinator. Uh, he and I have worked together for a long time. Uh, Mike Wolthausen on the offensive side. Uh, both of those guys have got, uh, you know, not just uh, a good coaching relationship, but a good personal relationship with, so that trust goes a long way. Uh, last year, I took on the special teams coordinator position myself. Uh, and this year I've added Jamie Borum as an assistant head coach and a special teams coordinator. Uh, and he's got tons of uh, CFL experience and, and uh, high school as well and, and junior. So uh, having a guy like that is going to make a big difference. And, you know, we've known him for quite a while. So, so that's helpful. Uh, but then we've just added more position coaches as well. Um, Tyler Nickel came in uh, to help with quarterbacks uh, along with Adam Gamboris. Um, uh, Tony Lindsay, a longtime Sun player and coach, is back uh, with receivers. Uh, running backs, we've got Johannes Van Leenen from Calgary, Brett Crisco on the defensive side with uh, Mike Botterill, who's been here now a few years, um, Nick Pankhurst in the secondary, um, and you know Bobby Davis, another Sun alum, working with receivers, and uh, Cody Blondley, and uh, you know there's there's a few I'm probably missing, but um, having them all involved is is making a, a big difference. And Brian Teeson on the offensive line, it's his uh, second full year with us as a full-time offensive line coach, and. Uh, just invaluable and of course uh, Ray Wheatley's kind of a, a staple here as well for you know 28 years or something like that so um, there's a lot of familiarity but at the same time there's some new faces to bring uh, extra level of competition to practice um, and our practices have got to be harder than games and and we're at that point now where we feel we're practicing at a high level which which always translates to good work on Saturday Wanted to touch on recruiting too because you guys had a busy off season in that regard as well. What were some of the highlights of the off season recruiting wise for you? Uh, it's you know it's kind of up and down. You know there are times where you feel like uh, your phone's ringing off the hook and, and things are going really well, and then uh, there's times where everything's quiet. Uh, in this landscape of social media, there's eight different ways you can get a hold of a kid. Um, you know through Facebook or through Twitter or text and phone. Um, so adjusting to that is always always fun, but um, you know it's also opened up a lot of doors. We can watch film on thousands of kids, and you know we don't have to rely on on people to uh, wait and send them out. We can seek them out ourselves. So um, that's a big difference. And then having the position coaches involved, they have got multiple points of contact with us. So uh, we we feel like we know our guys pretty well by the time they get here. And just wrapping up main camp here at this point. How has it all gone for you uh, from what you've seen out there? Do you uh, feel, maybe, maybe even compared to this time last year, what's your feeling with the group you've got now? Well, we've got um, you know, such a talented group of guys. We've really fleshed out our, our depth on offensive and de defensive lines as well as linebacker. 
Um, you know, we were battling a few minor injuries, but it, for the most part, we stayed healthy. And compared to last year, you know, we weren't sure if we'd have enough uh, enough bodies to, to get on the game day roster. But, you know, this year we have tough decisions to make. We've got to cut 78 down to 55 for game day. So um, that, that's a bit stressful in itself, but comparatively, uh, we'd, a good problem to have. Let's talk about the group that uh, you've got here. Maybe starting with offense, uh, Keith Zyle is a guy that uh, was here last year. Wasn't your main guy last year. He split time with Foster Martins, but he's going to be your guy this year. Yeah, Keith has done a great job of working in the offseason, put in a lot of time. He lives in, in Florida uh, with his family in the offseason and trained there. A great uh, atmosphere and, and climate to train outdoors all, all year round. Uh, and we kind of put it in his hands, like, this is your team. Uh, we've got full confidence in Keith. and. Uh, he's lived up to all of that so far and just where we wanted him to be. You know, there's no question about who our starter is. Uh, of, of course, we've got other guys. Nick Wenman's coming in uh, in the number two spot and then a couple of younger guys competing for that position as well to push Keith a little bit. Um, but, uh, you know, we, he's been great in leadership role and uh, I think you'll see athletically he's going to get the job done. In terms of receivers, running backs as well, familiar names from last year's team on this year's team. Are you expecting those veterans to carry the load or is there some room for some rookies there as well? Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely have room for rookies. Um, you know, our, our goal is kind of when we go out and recruit, we're not recruiting just random bodies. We want to recruit guys as if we're the number one team in the country. And when we do that, we, we have to be able to say, from day one, you'll have a shot to compete. And guys like uh, Tanner Sudo, running back, he's coming in behind Brandon Hansen and Kelton Curry and Robbie Rodriguez, all guys who have been here, um, that doesn't mean he won't play. Um, he, he has a great skill set, and we expect him to push those veterans. Defensive side of the ball, uh, there were some key names that graduated and moved on uh, in the offseason. Obviously, Lane Hull, a linebacker. You guys had uh, two big all-stars in the defensive line, too, that you saw depart. Uh, how do you feel about those gaps kind of being addressed here as we move forward into the start of the season? Well, the nice thing is about that, you know, we can plan for that. Um, we've, you know, we knew everybody who was going to leave and we'd have to replace, so those were key recruiting areas for us early on. Uh, we were really fortunate to get a couple of um, experienced players out of the University of Saskatchewan uh, in Mitch Lyons and Cole Cluart and um, Gabriel St. Germain coming from uh, New Brunswick. So those guys are going to step in right away and be impactful. Um, it's going to soften the blow. You can't replace guys like that, either offensive side, side of the ball or defense. You, you, you can't do it. What you can do is set them up to kind of bring their own personality and style of play and, and uh, support them in you know, being the best possible players they can themselves. We look forward to this weekend and the matchup this weekend. There's always going to be talk about, uh, obviously, West Shore being the team that eliminated you guys last year and that rematch there. But with the turnover that you talk about for this team, for all teams, is it not as big a deal, you know, when you're, when you're playing a team that eliminated you? Or do you still have those feelings kind of in the back of your head? You know, we've got kind of a, a philosophy around here where we're really only worried about ourselves. Um, whether it was uh, Chilliwack last year, first game, or, or West Shore, or Langley, it doesn't really matter to us because we compete against ourselves. We feel we've got the best defense in the country. Our offense gets to play against the best defense in the country every single day. Um, you know, if there's build up around the game, it's all good stuff. You know, it's the better West Shore is, the better it makes us. And eventually, you know, our goal is to compete for a national championship. And we don't do that by playing inferior competition. So the better they are, the better we are. And uh, we embrace the challenge. Uh, I, I know they're a well-coached bunch, so uh, we, it really forces us to be on our game, and there's no easy weeks. You know, we, we know that we're heading into this season with no, no breaks. So um, it's a good thing. It pushes us. It's going to get tedious, I'm sure, after a while. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, we're going to be better for it. You saw the group that they were last year, uh, really good offensive club last year, uh, played well on D as well. Going into this year, there are offensive weapons they had last year that they're not going to have this time around. Does that change your preparation at all? Uh, not really. You know, we felt Trey Campbell, their, their second string running back last year, was um, just as dynamic, if not more uh, dangerous than, than Jamel was uh, last year. Jamel had certainly a, a huge skill set, uh, but Trey just brings a whole different element that uh, is tough to prepare for. Um, you know, we're not familiar with uh, the new offense that they're running, so you know, a bit of it's a guessing game. But uh, I do know they have some playmakers, and uh, you know, forces us to be uh, sound on our assignments. And um, and really, we're we're waiting to see who our playmakers who are going to step up and, and who's going to take that role this year. So 
Um, you know, we're not taking them lightly, that's for sure. Um, but, you know, it's not going to change the way we prepare. Now joined here on Sunspots by uh, one of the big veterans on this Sun group. It's uh, Safety Beck Fullerton. Uh, first off, listen, I appreciate uh, you stopping by to chat. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. For sure. So going into this season, uh, lots to talk about. Uh, was, was talking uh, with, with Coach as well, just about you facing the team that eliminated you guys last year in this first week of the season this year. Lots of turnover season to season, but uh, as a player that remembers that feeling of standing out there and not advancing past the BCFC last year, does it get you a little more fired up for this game? Well, I think, I mean, subconsciously, of course, everyone remembers the feeling, but I mean, kind of just our MO this year is that uh, we're taking it game by game. We're focusing on ourselves. We have our game plan. We're not trying to get too high, too low. We're trying to stay medium, do our thing, and we think that if we do that correctly, uh, we'll get the, uh, the win that we deserve and that we deserved the year before. How about you as a player? Uh, how have you kind of evolved over the years going into your uh, final season with the team here? But, you know, when you think back to your rookie year, for example, how have you evolved as a player in that time? Well, I think I've evolved a great deal. I mean, besides just physically just being in the gym, committing myself full year round, I've been doing the 12 year or 12 month program, I mean, and just really pushing myself. But mentally, I just feel a lot more just calm and prepared and confident that I just understand what it takes and what I need to do. And I also understand being an older player that I have a responsibility to some of the younger guys and kind of just pick everybody up and, and yeah, so. I mean, it's a good point. Football, of course, this regular season, playoffs only over you know, four or five months of the year, but it really is a 12 month commitment. How hard was that to really embrace as a lifestyle for you? Well, at first I just, I wasn't like, just right out of high school, it was kind of just different, but I've just learned to love it. I've embraced it. It's, it's what I love to do. I mean, like for fun, like me and my friends, we train, right? We just want to be our best on the field. So we just do everything we can all year round. Don't take any days off. How about this group this year? Uh, I mean, tough to ask you the question about comparing it to years past, yeah. but how are you feeling going into this year with the group that you've got? Uh, I feel great about it, to be honest with you. Um, I feel like we gel a lot more than years past, and I feel like it's more of a cohesive unit. And that's a huge uh, emphasis by our coaches is to be a team and win as a team and to not have any individuals. I think we're doing a fantastic job of that. I feel like everyone's kind of coming together a lot sooner than we thought. And uh, I'm very excited and uh, optimistic about the year. For the DBs, going to be a bit of a younger group as well out there this year. Yeah. Uh, how do you approach that? Like you say, taking on more of that leadership role. Exactly. I mean, all, all you can do is just lead by example. Uh, teach them that you have to give it your all every week, every day in practice. And uh, that will translate to the game. And then once all the butterflies are done from the first game, I think everyone will be pretty good. Like they're catching on very well. Yeah. Do you still even get butterflies in a first game? Oh, of course, yeah, you have to, right? <laughs> you, you don't love it if you don't. Right? For sure, and I mean, let's talk about, obviously the end goal being championship, but even for you personally, do you have personal goals throughout this year that, that you'd like to see through? Yes, I have personal goals for myself. I always write down at the beginning of each year just the kind of personal goals I set for myself, but those are all completely secondary to the, to the major goal of winning a championship with my team. The process, the journey, if you will, all gets going Saturday, July 29th, right here at the Apple Bowl. That's when uh, the Sun are up against the West Shore Rebels, the team that eliminated them last year. They're back for the big week one matchup this year, and that'll be where it's at right here, July 29th, 7 p.m., the Sun and the West Shore Rebels. Thanks so much for coming by. Appreciate Thank you. It.